Welcome, Jose. Welcome to our Zoom meetings. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is uh, my name is Jose Aku Munoz, and I am a messenger for the Mayan tribes. Work with the indigenous people from Alaska, Ushuaia, in Alaska to Argentina, and we're going to uh, just have a little discussion today regarding the sacred calendars. Uh, the sacred calendars that I carry, there is uh, three parts to it. The first part is I was born into these calendars and at 13 I was given the mission, the task to share with the world uh, what we call the North American territories from Alaska to Montreal and down to Mexico and Central America. My task was to uh, share the cosmic vision, which we'll do today, cosmology, Mayan cosmology through the Shorty Mayan tribes. Uh, I mentioned it because there is 132 different Mayan tribes in the territories from Mexico City uh, through Central America all the way to Guatemala. So this is the Shorty cosmic Cosmovision, which is sometimes it might differ from what uh, the Western world has heard before. So I want to put that up front. There's three parts of it: the Mayan cosmology through the Chorty tribes. We are descendants of the Vikings uh, from ancient travels when we used to do commerce with the rest of the world through the um, uh, the oceans, mainly through the Atlantic Ocean. We are what we uh, call the descendants of the Maya and Viking uh, combination that we collaborated. Uh, it is called the uh, Maya Short Tea Tribes, and we still, there is uh, roughly about uh, 800,000 of us in the Mayan lands, mainly across the border, what is now border of Honduras and Guatemala. So, this is the cosmic vision that we'll talk about today. Then the second part is uh, I have been teaching the calendars. There's 23 calendars that we have kept in this tribe. Uh, the one I was born into and what I practice and share in uh, different ways, including uh, online now, is called the Tolkien, uh, also known as the Tolkien. And it is the <clears throat> sacred ceremonial calendar is made out of uh, 260 days and then the third part is the sixth sun calendar the sixth sun calendar is made of uh, 23 and a half or let's say 24 calendars from around the world it includes mathematics and physics from many cultures ancient and current and it was composed by three of the uh, human tribes here in this world. It started collaborating in the 1970s. These three tribes are what we now know as the Maya tribe, the Tibetan tribe, and the Hopi tribe from the Sacred Mesa. So these elders gather all this information, their visions, and their current events and stances, and compose what we call the six sun calendar which is the new 26,000 year calendar that started in december 22nd of 2012 the day of imosh imish the crocodile and so through these teachings what this is is an invitation for people to see themselves in past, present, and future at the same time with the specific purpose of going into the past from the moment of conception into past lives from the birth, moment of birth through conception, past lives, and current lifetime with specific purpose of healing our past, our ancestry. And so this technology is also used, this six-sun calendar 
mapping of the universe is also used to go into the future. Whether it is two hours from now or one day from now or 200 years from now, uh, with the mathematics, we now have calculated all the way to the year 77,772 into the future. So we can go that far into the future, which allegedly that will be the time when humanity and others will gather their wisdom and knowledge together to form a structure around Mother Earth, the planet, and will propel to the seventh sun at that time. So again, the purpose of this calendar's technology is to go into the past and into the future to heal our world, our heart, our mind, our spirit, our physical body. So when we say we go into the future, I like to go to the year uh, 2099 to the winter solstice ceremony on the day of Act 7 and remember that we were there praying for intergalactic harmony. So going there, I come back um, to the space and time all the way to where I'm sitting right now, speaking with my sisters and brothers, utilizing this current technology that we have so we can remember this, what I to me, to the Choti tribes, these are facts. So we go into the past and the future to heal our families, our hearts, our world, our universes, and multi-dimensions. This is the invitation of the sacred calendar of the sixth sun. So with that, I'd like to say today, it is uh, still the sacred day of the deer. And with the deer, we acknowledge all the protectors of water, earth, air, fire, the protectors of Mother Earth. And in the same teachings, when we see past, present, and future at the same time, today is the day of peace. In this new world with these new calendars where I tap into the astrology aspects of it. We know that in this new world, there's five new archetypes. It's balance, unity, joy, peace, and harmony. So if I may uh, stop here and share um, screen. Is that okay? Try again, please, Jose. <laughs> it's coming now. Okay, do you see this? Can you guys see it on the screen? And so in this new world that we uh, start this calendars, these are the astrological signs of the new world where we still have the sacred winds. This was how the date started in December 22nd of 2012 on the day of Imosh Imish the crocodile. So it indicates the reading for that particular day was the wisdom, which means the crocodile, the one who knows everything, the one who is a lake composed of the ancient knowledges from the past, the present, and the future, from all directions, from the east, the west, the north, the south from on the ground and from the skies. This is the, how the 26,000 years started in December 22nd of 2012. And so the reading for this particular day was 
that this is the day where we're going to first start working to bring the entire universe into balance. Balance is one of the new five archetypes of the new world. And this is how in the Mayan world we knew that the gates of wisdom needed to be open for everyone. And this is why this document is now uploaded to be shared with humanity uh, in every way and any way we can to share it. So this new time, this new world is composed of wisdom and knowledge. It's composed of the balance. It's composed of the Akbal, the night vision. So we now, everyone who has crossed into the new world since 2012, we now have the night vision, the vision of the owl. This vision helps us to be very discerning. It helps us to see through the darkness. It helps us to see through the smoke screens that uh, deception has sometimes. This is the time where the lizard world comes into place and it is a seed for business. So since 2012, those with this wisdom have been able to utilize these energies and practice on daily every 20 days, whenever the day of the lizard falls, to plan businesses. This is uh, where that successful businesses can be established with that lizard. It also shows that the calendar tells us that the sacred winds are in place. So that means to humanity, we are in a very highly unstable period. From 2012 to 2032, we are travelers. We are on the move. We change partners quite often. We change house quite often. We change homes and jobs quite often because this is the time of the wind for 20 years until 2032. So for those of us who have the balance and the, what in the Western call, uh, well, is called stability. When you have your significant other, you have your home and your job, that is uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, this calendar is not anti-stability, it's just saying that we are in a time of high instability. So those of us who are trying to desperately hold on to stability might have a, a little rough time for the next few years until 2032. So to counterbalance this, the Mayan world has established that we just need to travel like the wind once in a while, short trips, so we can uh, counter the instability of the period. There is actually people who are born under this sign of the wind, so they're having a beautiful time traveling and moving just like the wind. So I brought this as an example of what the new world shows. There's people who are being born in work for balance, in the day of the balance. And as you notice, in this balance sign, this came from the teachings of the Orient. They contributed this for this calendar. But there is no darkness in it. It's composed of light only. And this is one of the prophecies that in this period of 26,000 years, before we can uh, move into a different realm, into a different dimensional uh, magnetic field of light only, this is a prediction that at some point within these 26,000 years, there will be no darkness. What people have in the mind, uh, perception of darkness, criminality, uh, illnesses, diseases, anything that people, it makes people unbalanced will not exist. That's one of the predictions of this new calendar, the six sun calendar composed of 23 systems of astronomy, astrology, mathematics from the ancient world and the new sciences. So this is what I have, this is um, the, the world, uh, vision through the sixth sun, which again is a composite 
wisdom of three different tribes, Tibetans, Hopi, and Mayan. There is a call document that I can share with, uh, uh, with you. Anyone who is interested in getting this document can contact me. Uh, unfortunately for now, this is the only way uh, you might have these tools. I have a few PDF files that can be shared freely with those of you who feel the call to delve a little deeper into the notions of the six sun calendar. It has a lot of applications, just like any other system of astrology in the actual 3D world in the eternal present. But it is an invitation to visit the past and the future for the purpose of healing. Our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our spirits. It is in this way that we can uh, work for balance, unity, joy, peace and harmony, and eventually unite and work together for what we call intergalactic harmony. Then the third piece of the, um, what I bring today is the Cosmovision to the Maya Shorty tribe. The Cosmovision uh, varies from other tribes from the world. So I start with the story of creation. The story of creation uh, through the Shoti tribes is our ancestors led by Pakao Botan, by Kukulkan and Quetzalcoatl, which are in our tradition the same spirit. They came from a planet called Shahil. 294 trillion years ago, as we know time. They came through a Pleiades cluster and they found the latitude and longitude that was perfect to build the mothership planet, Mother Earth. They had three bundles from Shahil, uh, which was about to be extinct. And through those bundles, they built in the ship lab, built what we now know as Mother Earth, and we are all part of it. The main difference in this story and other stories that you will find in other cultures in the world is the timeline. Uh, 294 trillion years ago, that's when they first found the latitude and longitude to build this planet. Now, as we know, and some scholars who had translated the uh, works from other Mayan tribes, they have pointed the start of creation uh, 14 through 16 billion years ago, which to the Choti tribes, that is uh, <clears throat> only a second in time compared to our creation story. And what we have in common is that we have um, built and collapsed um, four different worlds for different periods of time of destruction. We are in the current fifth world and we are on the path to the sixth sun, hence the name of this calendar. We are living with and regulated by the fifth sun. We are living in the fifth world, and we got, we're going towards the sixth, which will come in 26,000 years from December 22nd of 2012. Through those worlds, the ley list was the destruction of Atlantis, which according to our story, the Choti Cosmovision, that happened 66,230 years, one month, and one day today. Uh, this is how long that Shoki family, my mother's family, grandmother's family, have been keeping time day to day. That's how I know. The last destruction was 66,230 years one month and one day today. That was the day when Atlantis went into the ocean 
we separated in 13 different tribes. Three of the, our tribes went to space and became the time space travelers who have built other worlds in different dimensions and different universes. Three tribes came and established uh, what we call the Tulans, the New Atlantis, which are now called Tulans. One of them is in Mexico, one of them is in Guatemala, one of them is in Peru. Other tribes went and established the Northern Isles, where we now know as Ireland and England. And other tribes yet went into the hollow earth and established what we call Shivalva. Shivalva is misinterpreted as hell because of some translators. That's what they related it with. Shivalva is an actual world where the lizard world, the lizard kingdom lives. To us, they are as good as the humans, like anything, they have the rotten apples, but they're actually, uh, to us, they are brothers and sisters who are also working for intergalactic harmony. And so, through these tribes, this all happens 66,230 years, one month and one day. That's when, according to the story, the world, the spoken stories, for the Cherokee tribes, that's what happened. And then we resurface how this knowledge came through the time, space and time, many lifetimes, to the year 1444. This is the year where the tribes, the last gathering of the space tribes and earth tribes gathered together into Lansu and decided what they were gonna do for the next 500 years so they can continue teachings uh, the teachings and the medicines of the ancient ones uh, could survive uh, very harsh uh, situations around the world for the next 500 years, and then finally arrive to the Oshlahuf Bakhtun, the period of elimination, which is started in December 22nd of 2012, um, the day of Kimosh Imish, the crocodile. So that is what we have as the visions of cosmovision of the Maya Chorty tribes. And I would like to stop now and open for any questions if there is questions. Great, thank you, Jose. Can you please click on stop share at the top of the screen? I'll stop the share, yes, of course. Okay, great. And can you switch your video on? Video. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. That was so fascinating. It's just mind boggling, really. So many thousands of videos. Um, Jose, do you, um, I know that you teach Maya astrology, but what about astrology that we practice? Like, do you believe that we are now in the age of Aquarius? Yes, the uh, age of Aquarius to us also started in uh, what we call the cosmic convergence that is started in December 22nd of 2012. Yes. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. In uh, the an age of Aquarius and uh, the convergence is that's is why they combine the ancient uh, Greek astrology into the six sun calendar to honor that part of existence, uh, and we compare that uh, to a two thousand year period that started in two thousand twelve. Yes. Wow, excellent. I was thinking it did, and I'm so glad that, um, yeah, so glad that was accurate. Any other questions, anybody? Hi, Jose, it's Carly here. I was wondering if you have any insight as to what caused Atlantis to sink or go underwater. Yes, the, and again, 
to me, these are facts because this is the stories that have been uh, brought me here to this very meaning uh, after Zoom, the technology and everything before that happened for me to be here. These have all been facts that have happened for the last 66,000 years. So what caused the Atlantean going down into the ocean was uh, earthquakes, which were caused by massive um, meteorites hitting Earth all at once. Essentially, the, we got very, very close to the um, asteroid belt, and gravity pulled massive asteroids to Earth that caused earthquakes, and that sank Atlantis. Now, I'm aware that there's many theories about it. Uh, one that fascinates me is that they put the uh, one side as dark, the other side as light, one being the Lemurians, the other the Atlanteans, and there was a war and technology made Atlantis sink. And uh, to us, that's uh, fascinating stories uh, that were made up. Uh, we have, again, kept that time for that long, and this has this is the story that I have uh, received from the elders. So to me, that is a fact. Uh, there was a time when we got too close to the asteroid belt, and that's why the earthquakes happened. The asteroids came to Earth and uh, sank half of the island into the Atlantic Ocean initially. And it is through ceremonies that we, the spirits that were there, um, were led by uh, what we call the Mayam and Fire Butterfly to do a ceremony for eternity where we will retain our memories for the next 13 lives so we could be here today talking. So it's good to see you again, Kelly. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Cool. Um, what about the crystal skulls, Jose? There, I think there, you said there were 12 of them. The crystal skulls, uh, in our, again, this is another one of those stories that they vary from tribe to tribe. Uh, to us, they first came with Takalbatan, the time traveler who established Mother Earth. And they were actual beings from Sahil on the planet, but they were not 13 or a multiple of 13. They were uh, 5, 000, over 5,000, according to uh, the story. There was 5,114 crystal skulls, crystal beings that became solid, and they were made of silicon oxide, but they had light. So that's what we have kept telling all these years, and that's what we still maintain. Right now, we are aware that there is 88 ancient skulls, and uh, science declared them ancient after they put them to a test, which is basically put them into an oven at 400 degrees, and if they explode, they are not ancient. Uh, I have one that was gifted to me by uh, uh, Japanese people, uh, has been tested that way, and still here. And, uh, it's not 13, like most people say, but it's a, a beautiful Hollywood script story, according to the show T-Tribes. And uh, right now, it's 88 of them out. The last one was found in Romania, underneath a church. And recognized as ancient, there's only nine. Uh, the one I have, the name is Chame, and that's uh, spell number nine. And that's according to science, uh, what uh, that she is ancient. I, I didn't say it, I just gave it to them for the test, and they decided that it was ancient because it didn't explode after fire. Wow, okay. What about the other native peoples in the world, like the Australian Aborigines? You know, I, do they hold 
I mean, did I connect? You know, I, you? I missed that completely. I did not hear you. Oh, what about other native peoples in the world, like the Australian Aborigines? Are they connected to you? Well, we we acknowledge them as one of the star tribes uh, that left Atlantis and came back. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. They established themselves uh, in that area. So to us, to the Mayan people, the Aborigines from Australia, they are star beings that. Uh, became human through evolution and mixing with the local uh, earthlings. So this I know uh, to be also a fact uh, scientifically because when um, if you went to uh, do a poll and see how many HRO negative blood is in, in those stripes there is a lot. So that's another common thread that we have with many of the tribes. There's another tribe in, in the Amazon called uh, Starayaku. It has a lot of uh, non-human related blood, uh, where scientists cannot pinpoint where the origin was from. Thank you, very interesting. Any other questions? Um, I'd like to know, uh, how, how do the African tribes fit in? Yes. Uh, there is, uh, in our stories, uh, that was the seventh tribe that went to those territories and established a kingdom called Lenin. Uh, I believe remnants of that, or the pyramids from that kingdom are still uh, you can still go and actually walk the grounds in the country of Yemen. So again, that was another one of the tribes that carried the wisdoms and the medicines from the ancient uh, Atlantean, which you can imagine Atlantean being like the hub for ancient time space travelers. So they do come from many, many the mention that you asked, uh, they all came through the hub, the space hub in Pleiades, which I would say was like the space station where everybody will stop for gas, if you will, and continue the journey to Earth. But Yemen, city of Lenin and uh, Yemen. Thanks, Jose. Uh, hi, Jose. Um, but just with uh, Atlantis there and getting hit by the the meteorites, do like do you have any idea as to like a a deeper meaning sort of behind that? You know, sort of like. Was there some sort of reason why that happened? Was that always meant to happen? Was that always going to happen? You know, or was it just like a, a fluke of nature? Or was there some sort of energy on here? There's something that was going on that drew that to us? Or what, you know, the, the meaning underneath that? Do you have any insight to that? Yes, yeah, the according to the story we follow, it was uh, uh, grief for energy, uh, energy. Uh, the energy in the fuel levitation. Uh, according to them, it was not enough for us to levitate around Mother Earth. We wanted to levitate physically into space. It was not enough for us to have that technology to travel to space and time in spirit. We wanted to do it physically and we got very close to it. So, still, time space. Travel was possible, but not through levitation. Uh, we actually had uh, individual rockets, we call them, that we can attach to us and travel to space physically. So I would say if we put it, uh, and this is not just uh, my opinion, it's what I was told. It was greed for energy that uh, actually caused Mother Earth to move too close to the uh, 
and asteroid belt. Whatever experiments they were doing, that's that's what it cost to. Thank you. Thank you. And I really would like to know if, uh, uh, if there's any other theories that I'm not aware of. I'm only aware of the one that people say that Atlantis were on one side and Lemurians in the other and they went to war. Uh, and then what I know as a fact, which is the grid for energy and moving too close to the asteroids. Is there any other theories that I'm not aware of now that I have uh, you butterflies together here? What do you know that I don't I like to know? Are you asking us? Yes. Um, <laughs> what's that question again? What do we know that you don't know? Yeah, regarding Atlantis, what that demise, why did we go into the ocean, and uh, what caused getting close to the asteroid belts? Or if there is any other theories or stories that you may have heard because you, you come from another clan uh, that was there. To me, uh, every one of you were there. And uh, there's a very uh, specific reason why we're talking together, composing this giant puzzle that we need to tell the story to the world sooner or later. I've um, you, offered a, a, a theory that... I'd like to, for you to share, if you will. Sure. Um, I haven't looked into this too deep, but... It makes sense to me. I, I know I've read in a few places that Earth was, you know, around that time, the Atlantean time, Earth was designed sort of to, to be in its true nature, sort of a hub of information where many different life forms could come here and sort of share information, store information. It wasn't necessarily, you know, good or bad. But then there was some sort of attack, like on Earth, an evil sort of attack, a dark force that... Not when I say evil, um, a, a force that wanted to basically suck the the energy or the life force from from Earth. So there was sort of like a, a war, you know, um, and they overpowered and have since been on Earth. And you know, we I think we see that in a, you know in a lot of places where a lot of people are getting drained. Um, <laughs> that's that's a theory that I've heard. I, I'm not. I haven't decided either way, like I'm not 100% sure, but it had some resonance to me. Mm -hmm. Jose, um, actually, uh, probably nobody knows. We, you know, I'm thinking that really nobody knows. Um, but I have heard something about a massive volcano that blew. Um, Mm. Yeah, in uh, from my memories, when uh, after half of the island went down, and we had to rely on our physical um, strength and skills to survive for a few hours before we went into the portal of fire for eternity. There was uh, volcanoes everywhere uh, exploding and uh, from Mother Earth there's opening rivers, what we call the fire rivers, but they were actually lava, uh, molten lava everywhere. So it was very difficult for us to make it all the way to the, uh, the portal site where we perform uh, a ceremony for eternity so our spirits could live and make it through and, and still uh, bring their teachings back to the world in this time and space after the period of elimination in 2012. So it's definitely a volcano, for sure, that, that makes lots of confirmation and sense, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, there's also what you mentioned about sometime in the next 26,000 years that there will be no darkness. This sounds Fantastic. <laughs> um, are we feeling this already? Do we know this? Do some of us, uh, uh, have some of us reached that state already? Yes. Many, many uh, humans and others in this uh, universe are already there. Uh, but if we can't physically, humans and 
there's a lot of fact that I I'm sure is within your DNA memory that every physical body is capable of holding up to 425 different time and space traveling spirits. So if we count just physically how many bodies we have in this planet, we have over 7 billion bodies. And you can imagine the amount of time and space travelers, spirits that are within them. We have some, so many of us. And among us, there is a few, I would say a few hundred, maybe a few thousand, maybe even millions that have reached that state where uh, they are in balance, in peace, and joy, in unity, and harmony, helping the rest of us to achieve that state. And that's really where uh, my interest in comes in as my service is to identify these people who are working for peace, joy, balance, unity, and harmony, and put them together in a room, in a Zoom room, and whatever way we can because you know we are now in numbers that uh, we can achieve that faster. So yes, there is plenty of people who are already living this. Uh, they're already living prophecies, working prophecies. They are in intergalactic harmony already. Oh wow, that is so beautiful. Um, I'll bet there. I'll bet I know quite a few of them as well. Um, these people will. I still feel human emotion, like anger and, you know, all that stuff, but... Yeah, you know, according to the prophecies of 2012, and this is after we run from Alaska to Guatemala, seven months of running, praying for the water, so every step of the way, there was this council of, of elders, and yes, they say that this is a period where uh, people see more things, people feel more things, and that's because we are in a period where different parallel and different worlds cross each other. In other words, the spiritual realm crossing into the 3D world, and so we can see spirits. A lot of us can see, feel, and hear spirits. So uh, yes, we're all, uh, we're in a period where there's a mix of all of it at once. But, um, just to have this conversation is so multi-dimensional to me. You know, the, the fact that we can be in the same space and time, even though you are already 13 to 18 hours ahead into the future, to me, that's, that is crossing the line. So why we know the other? Mm -hmm. Would you have some advice for these people who, um, how, what would you call them? These are the people of no darkness. Do they have a name? These are the new archetypes of, of the world. Uh, so the people of balance, the people of joy, the people of unity, peace, and harmony. That's the names that, with the language we're using currently, I, I feel that is the proper way of acknowledge them. But so as a single group, there's no, um, I don't have that, no, I don't have a name. Um, what, you, what you taught us before, at the beginning of the meeting, you mentioned balance, unity, joy, peace, and harmony. What were these, what were you mentioning these in regard to? These are the new archetypes of the new world. So there's children, these are their astrological signs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Of those archetypes. Uh, balance, unity, joy, peace, and harmony. Yeah. Any advice that you can give to these people? Um, you know. Yes, uh, the number one thing that we apparently must do, and you guys can verify and maybe agree or disagree with it, but what I feel they us we need to do is unite so when we find the people who are born across this world in the day of balance and unity they work for that particular tribe of peace we need to find each other and unite and work together yes unite that would be the key word unity that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions?
Okay, Jose, we might wind down the meeting now. I want to thank you so much. Can you leave us with some words of advice for the future? How to conduct ourselves? How do we, you know, what can you, um, what advice can you give us? The main thing I think uh, is remember who we are. Uh, remember where we came from. Remember where we are and remember where we are going. It is within us and I am very grateful to all our ancestry for all of us to have made all those decisions through space and time, every decision we ever made so we could be together here once again today. So remember that is that would be the advice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. That is so beautiful. Thank you from all of us. And we'll see you next time, Jose. Yes, thank you. Good work going. It's beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful and so lovely to see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.